Dear students, welcome back. In the previous session, we have discussed about the types of power grip. And this power grip is one of the type of handling activities that is prehension. Okay. Now, in this session, we are going to discuss about the another type of prehension that is precision handling. Okay. So, the precision handling, if you can see how the sequence of this precision handling takes place means, same as that of power grip, uh, in the power grip, it is having four steps of sequence, isn't it? So, out of four steps of sequence, the first, second and third steps are common to precision handling also. So, what are those um, sequence steps? One is the opening of hand, positioning the fingers, approaching the fingers to the object and the fourth one, whereas in the power grip, the sequence for the power grip is maintaining a static face which helps in gripping. But in the case of precision handling, the fourth step is modified here. So, in the precision handling, the fingers and thumb grasp of the object with the intention of manipulating the object within the hand. So, that means there is a movement of the fingers is taking place. So, the manipulation is taking place. That means it is not in static phase. So, there is some movement is there in the fourth step. Okay. So, these are the four um, steps, sequence of steps involved in precision handling. Okay. Next, the positions and muscular requirements of precision handlings or somewhat more variable than those of uh, power grip and for this kind of um, handling it requires much finer motor control and it is having a intact sensation so here the movements are normally taking place in uh, two jaw chuck or three jaw chuck normally it is two jaw chuck. Here, to, here the two jaw chuck means the thumb acts as um, one jaw and um, the second jaw is by fingers. If only index finger is involved then it is two jaw chuck and in the case of three jaw chucks so what will happen the middle finger is also taking part in it. So uh, what happens in the two jaw chuck means how the thumb is placed here. Here the thumb is one of the jaw in two jaw chuck or three jaw chuck. So the thumb is generally abducted and rotated from the palm. So he, here you can see here the thumb is abducted and it is also rotated from the palm. So this is the position of the thumb here we can see and we can find three varieties of precision handling one is uh, pad to pad tip to tip and pad to side prehension now we are going to discuss about pad to pad prehension okay here the pad to pad prehension involves opposition of the pad or pulp of the thumb so here you can find a position of the pad or pulp of the thumb to the pulp of the finger so and also the pulp of the finger to the other so it is called as pad to pad normally it is in the pad of distal phalanx of each digit which are having greatest concentration of tactile corpuscles are found in the digital phalanges nearly at the pulps. Okay. 
eighty percent of precision handling uses this mode of prehension. So out of uh, hundred percent of precision handling, eighty percent is done by this pad to pad prehension. Okay, next. So here how the joints are moved or uh, present in the pad to pad prehension means the mcp and pip joints are partially flexed so here you can see the mcp and pip joints are partially flexed with the degree of flexion being dependent on the size of the object okay and um, the distal interphalangeal joints may be fully extended so the interphalangeal joint may be fully extended or partially or in slight flexion we can call it as partial flexion or very slight flexion we can see in the distal interphalangeal joints when distal interphalangeal joint is extended the flexor digitorum superficialis alone performs the function when partial dip flexion is required then fdp must be activated and also here the interosseous activity is present both in supplementing mcp flexor force and in providing mcp abduction or adduction required in the object manipulation okay in dynamic manipulation the volar and dorsal interosse tend to work separately rather than uh, with synergistic co contraction pattern which we have observed in the power grip and in a firmly maintained pad to pad pinch the muscles may again contract okay if you see the thumb thumb in pad to pad prehension we can see there is a slight flexion in the cmc joint so the first carpo metacarpal joint is in flexion and also you can find the abduction and you can find the rotation of the thumb here the first mcp and ip joints are partially flexed to fully extended okay the thinner muscle control is provided by so as we know that uh, it is having four thinner muscles one is opponens pollicis flexor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis brevis and finally adductor pollicis so the thinner muscle control is mainly done by the three muscles one is opponens pollicis flexor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis brevis and these muscles are innervated by the median nerve and if we required there is an increase in pressure of the pinch then adductor pollicis will come into action and this adductor pollicis is innervated by ulnar nerve if you see any ulnar nerve paralysis loss of adductor pollicis function occurs which leads to thumb as less stable okay and fine adjustments in the angulation of the dip that is distal interphalangeal joint of the finger and ip joint of the thumb provide the control for the points of contact on the pads of the digits in full finger uh, dip and um, thumb ip extension if you see um full finger dip and thumb extension so full extension contact occurs on the proximal portion of the distal phalanx so so if uh, these two joints are extended then contact um, moves towards the proximal aspect of the pulp okay 
as flexion of the fingers so if you see the flexion is increased in the uh, dip um and ip joint increases then the contacts move more distally which moves towards the nails okay the flexion when required is provided by the fdp for the finger for the finger fdp is required for a dip flexion whereas in the thumb flexor pollicis longus is required okay and dip flexion in the finger is accompanied uh by proportional flexion at the proximal interphalangeal joint so th- all these are found in the pad to pad prehension okay so we have found that in the power grip the extensor musculature is used for opening the hand to grasp for release and for stabilization whenever it is necessary if you see in the thumb the extensor pollicis longus may be used to maintain the interphalangeal joint in extension when contact is light on the proximal pad okay so this is all about the pad to pad prehension in the next session we are going to see another type of precision handling that is tip to tip prehension thank you